So this is um, possibly, I think, the the highest print I've actually done with the Prusa, um, and hopefully it will actually fit. It, it should fit uh, according to the slicer program, but I'm getting to um, an inch or so away from the, the topmost uh, printable area, and I've still got, uh, I think, about 20% to go or something, but I'm sure this will fit. Um, you may or may not recognise what this part is. This is actually um, a 3D um, part of the R2-D2 dome um, that I've uh, thought I'd try and print. This is There's seven parts to this, which is the circular bit, and then two parts for the top. Um, this bit has been printing now for, uh, I think, 26, 27 hours, and it's got a lot, two or three hours to go. Which is why uh, I hope it will fit in the uh, on the printer. I'm sure it will because it says it will in the slicer. So uh, that's been chugging away. Uh, and um, what else have I got to show you? That's just a pan to the left. I've got my uh, 3D print head sitting down there, and we've got the um, the legs which we showed in a previous video, which uh, are just sitting on the table down there. Okay, so as you can see, just a continuation. This is the uh, R2D2 dome and the, uh, the parts I've, I've uh, built so far. Just to give you some background, this is based on the um, Mike Badley's uh, uh, 3D uh, designs uh, on his on his. Um, uh, Patreon site, so do go there. I'll put a link on the uh, on, on this YouTube, but go and have, go and check them out and and uh, and support him on Patreon if you're going to build one of these because it's something I'm going to be doing because um, uh, they are really good. He's got uh, all the SDLs for uh, his pretty much his whole whole build. He, I think he's working on the uh, two three two leg, the drop down leg part at the moment. But uh, so that's I think that's coming next year. But uh, it's it's really good. This is version this is his version two um, droid. I think the version one uh, was more based on um, on James Bruton's version, um, which is another one you have to go and have a look at. That's uh, James Bruton's R six droid, which is incredible. Um, check out his websites again. I've got a link on there, um, and also the the main forum for R two D two. I mean, it's all I've never really looked into all of this, but I've just been doing a bit of research over the last few days. But Astromech is the forum, uh, one of the official forums, which is really good. There's so much information on there. Um, different builds, how you build them out. I mean, this is obviously 3D, but you can build them out of wood, metal, whatever you want to build them out. Really. Um, also, there's lots of information about control systems on there. Uh, they've got their sort of their own system. Uh, James Bruton did, and uh, he had his um, Arduino-based control system with a ready control handset. Um, the one I think I'm going to do, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do control-wise, is use the EasyB controller for this because I've got a spare EasyB control unit, um, the V4, because I bought a, a, um, a V4 kit the other day, which also came with um, a continuous. Uh, couple of continuous servos plus four fixed servos, they're HD versions, so they'll, they're going to get used on this, uh, and a camera. So hopefully, um, if I get all that working, I'm going to put a camera in the dome um, and control it with the EasyB unit, which you can control remotely, uh, either via your um, mobile, your iPhone or your Android, or also, um, I was looking, you can control it via the PS, um, PS3 PlayStation remotes. Um, and I think also probably the, um, the the Microsoft version, the Xbox ones, I think work as well. But I haven't actually done that yet, so I'm going to look into that. So that'd be quite uh, interesting to do. So um, yeah, I want to give it the full electronic uh, total build. It'd be really nice, and, and then later on um, add in the the third, uh, the moving foot, the mechanical foot, um, which is on um, James Bruton's version, which is which is really fun. Um, so that's uh, that's where I'm at the moment. As I say, this is this is a these are long prints, so it'll give me a chance to finish off uh, my other remove bits and pieces. Um, I spent quite a bit of time slicing uh, the the parts uh, with uh, Slick 3R. I didn't. I don't know if anyone else has had a problem with that. It's not really a problem, but. Um, to get them levelled flat on the bed in, in Slick 3R can be quite an issue because they, they sort of come at various different angles when you open up the file. So um, that took me a while to get them sort of flattened on the bed. 
I'm printing with additional um, sections around the base just to make sure these pieces stick um, but I'm not uh, using support on any of these pieces other than just having a look there there's actually support built in just a, along the top and plus you've got these some of these sections which are actually support because they snap out but there is some support pieces in there so this this actually comes with support but there's nothing inside uh, and it's, it's less than 45 degrees so it's, it's sitting on the bed really well just to um, you can just see it a look there. It's, it's, it's no problems um, it only just fits on the bed. They do do a smaller version, or I might at least got a smaller cut version of this if you've got smaller printers. Uh, so it's uh, chomped this up into more sections. So there's a, as I said, there's another, there's another section, uh, two pieces going here, and then the top dome, and then the base. Um, oops. Uh, there's the, the Lazy Susan ring, and I, I've actually seen. I'm in the UK, and I've seen a UK supplier doing a, um, a lazy season ring of 450 mil I think it is for about 30 pounds UK sterling which doesn't seem too bad but I'm, I'm looking at the drawings again I'm not sure if, if, if I actually need it but uh, as I say I'm still sort of progressing my way through the design so um, uh, I may well need it I haven't tried to clean this up at the moment I've just uh, just got it to, to hold together just to see how it does stick together so I'm just going to take some edging off that um, it's, it's not really filed at all but uh, and it's just uh, just bolted together just for the time being but that will obviously will be glued uh, together um, this is as I say PLA is not um, so I'll be using super glue on this um, but the pieces are coming out very nicely and it will fit on my bench which was the <laughs> which was my other concern but um, I think I'm gonna have to get a sort of a stand or something in the middle of a bench uh, in my, to, to seat this um, whole R2D2 because he's quite big as you know um, but um, it'll be really good fun because I think all um, self-respecting um, in-move robots need a droid um, so <laughs> so uh, Nigel the in-move is gonna get a droid there's my one hub printer which is uh, partly rebuilt um, I've got the uh, Ethernet uh, a uh, air Ethernet board I'm putting into there, so that's a, a project I need to continue and finish off. I'm sort of halfway through that. I've done a bit of the cabling on the back of that um, recently, and I've got the casing uh, for the power supply reprinted. So it's really a question of just bolting all that together and um, getting the uh, software onto the unit and um, and then testing it. So, but that hasn't um, hasn't happened recently. So I need to need to pursue that project a little bit more. Up here, I've just got uh, Nigel's legs hanging off the uh, off the roof, um, which is seems a seems a good enough place to keep them at the moment, just to keep them out of the way. Um, so that's uh, and and uh, as you as you can see, there's Nigel just keeping an eye on all proceedings. So that's where we are at the moment.